What's up, guys? Got a fan. Welcome back. And today we are looking at this guy. <laughs> What was that? I am a Gundam. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so today we're looking at the Oniwaka Kiramori, um, which was sent to me by the amazing Liz Frey. Uh, as a streamer, link, link is going to be below. Really, really appreciative. Really, really appreciative of them for sending me one down to check out. Um, because like they, they they keep DMing me with all these different model kits. Hey, you might be interested in this. You might be interested in this. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so, so you know, here we are. Um, some I don't. I mean, so I'm not bothered about it. There's, there's so many kits coming out of China right now that it's really hard to just go yes and and push the button on all of them. Um, but you know, there, there's there's sometimes you see one and you think, right, well, okay, you you, you weigh it up. You know, it has an internal skeleton, it has an action base, it has effect parts. It's quite a large-scale kit, so it ticks a lot of boxes for a decent display piece. You know, not necessarily because it's red. I'm not really a fan of red um, red plastic, um, but we'll have to wait and see what it's like. Um, the only thing I am aware of is the gold's uh, nub placement is a concern. But there's only a few gold pieces to worry about. So you can strip them, clean them up, and paint them yourself. So not too terrible uh, of a compromise. Uh, but certainly, if you do a straight build, nub marks are probably the worst thing uh, visible on a kit if you want to just throw it together and uh, have a, a decent display piece. But that said, um, I, I, I once I've finished the, uh, the gold-plated uh, Fenix HG... Uh, even though it's peppered with uh, nub marks from a distance, um, it still is an amazing visual piece. Uh, it's just a shame that it's not undergated, and it's a crime in, in my opinion. It should be international law that these companies are, are forced to undergate plated parts. Anyway, uh, I digress. Uh, this kit uh, was sent to me, uh, I've had it for a little while, um, but what I wanted to do is sort of roll it out, um, you know, when, when I can when I can fit it in, and today's the day. So, I don't know too much about it, but it is a massive box, this is how you're going to receive yours. Uh, there are obviously some obligatory uh, promotional sorts, it comes with a scythe, a sword I believe, as well as a spear. Um, it does come with a skeleton. Uh, which I think is part metal, part ABS. Um, and it does come um, with an action display stand as well. Which is, oh, here we are, it's on the box here. So it does come on a plinth with a support stand and some effect parts and stuff, which you can paint as you wish, which is pretty cool. Um, the price is relatively cheap, as you expect, coming from China. So retailers getting these in the UK and selling them at a, 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 a you know a decent price point is going to be quite difficult because you know obviously you can pick them up cheaper. So you know it's so some companies are going to uh, pick these up um, and support and, and supply these because they might be able to sell other things which keep the lights on. So they might just be going, oh, we'll get a few of these in stock. Um, so we can satisfy some people that want to, to actually support uh, UK vendors and whatnot. But there is not much money in them, which is why they're they're few and far between in the UK. So you normally have to go to AliExpress or other other companies and and play revenues where you can get this these sort of kits. Um, but they are popular. Um, but like a vet, you know, a, say a vendor gets two hundred of these, they're not going to make much on on them. You know. Um, however. You know, the trade-off is, you know, that some, some people might want these and they go, oh, okay, so-and-so's got these in stock, I'll go there. And while they're there, oh, look, they've got these in stock as well. So there is there is some value in these kits in the UK, but in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, if businesses are in, in, in for making money and growing rather than, like, just ne necessarily doing favours for customers... So there is there is a 50-50 argument as to whether these should be stocked in the UK considering how much of a um you know a markup you can realistically put on them. 
Um, and also wholesale. Uh, getting these on wholesale is an absolute headache for UK vendors um, as well um, because of going through certain websites and, through, and f jumping through certain hoops and this, that, and the other. Because uh, some of these, uh, I do believe, are not even supposed to like leave China for whatever reason. There's some other kits uh, out there that's not supposed to leave uh, their 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 purposed um, market range. So there's a whole bunch of headaches and reasons why these sort of kits um, sort of like don't enter uh, the UK. But you know there are ways and means, um, proxies and and stuff like that. So fear not if you want one of these. Um, you can get one. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna promote where this came from uh, or anything like that. It's just that you know, if you want, if you want the Oni uh, Wacker, you can look for it. It's all over. All over Google. Right. Okay. Without well, further ado, uh, I don't know too much about the origins of the look uh, in terms of demon law or anything like that. But obviously, it has got a, a demon-inspired uh, aesthetic. Because uh, it's got two ghost heads and a demon chest. And I think it does come with various faceplates as well. Uh, it does come with knee pole drivers, uh, pile drivers, sorry. Uh, and various other weapons and shields and, and, and whatnot. So we'll get through the pieces in a minute. Um, if you got this far, please, please leave a like. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. And this kit is undergated.
no nav marks on the blade. Love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. Yeah, the nub placement on the crest um, is going to leave three nub marks. <coughs> it's unavoidable, um, but I suppose the nub placements could have been put on the back or even under gated. Um, it, all it would have taken was to sort of move this injection port here, just under gate it onto the piece, uh, just edit the um, in the 3D CAD or whatever it is, just just to. You know when you when you know when you 3D print stuff on Chitty Box or whatever, you can move the injection port by, by the angle. Um, yeah, it's a shame, um, but you know the extra uh, time that they would have spent on that is is time spent elsewhere. I guess there's there's obviously reasons for it, uh, but yeah, sadly um, there are going to be nub marks on this uh, plastic. Because um, it does look like it's not injection co injection colour, um, but look, looks like it's been painted like the whole sprue's been painted. Uh, so when you obviously snip it off, there's going to be dark parts on there. But you can strip this uh, plastic um, and um, you know prime it and paint it yourself, and then you you won't have any visible marks. So, or you can get you can uh, get the, the right colour. You can source the right colour online and. Um, just to highlight, just uh, touch it up, I suppose. You know, you've got options. You know, model makers are going to be building this. Um, but certainly, if you've got no painting skills or whatever, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's quite a simple process. Uh, if you watch some videos and learn how to strip the paint and, and uh, paint it yourself. has come with various posable hands, expressive hands, fists, and holding hands, which is nice. However, I am a huge fan um, of the wing style or seed style hands where the, you don't, you're not continuously de-pegging the wrist. The whole hand piece stays the same and you just swap out the different fingers for various poses. I think it's a much uh, more economical system. You don't have loads of spare parts lying around and also pulling out the the ball joint out of the wrist Is less stress because it's fixed in there all the time. You're just swapping out the finger options I do believe that's a very very good way of doing things. It's more sturdy uh, However, you know hand options are still nice either way And the head sculpt kind of reminds me of uh, Double O to a little bit to a degree the Exia head. There's so many effect parts in this, it's going to be impressive to look at. Now we're getting to the action base itself, which is a nicely moulded, uh, although it's quite soft, it kind of looks like um, they've like got a bit of clay 
and then they put a plastic bag over the top of it and they sort of got a pen and like you know and did this and then they took that off and then made the mold uh, out of that um, this it is a simple way of, of doing rock effects by getting a bit of clay and lumping it up and then putting a trash bag over the top um, and then sort of like running that with like a toothpick or something and, and whatnot and then peeling the bag off and then you've got the effect for your, your, your mould. It kind of has that vibe to it. Uh, but yeah, you can paint this, prime this, dry brush it, um, add effects um, and all sorts. I mean, it's got cracks in it, so you can even do like a magma effect um, if you wish, or an ice effect, you know. Uh, I'm possibly going to try and do a, a frozen frosty base because uh, I've got some cracking uh, material which will look pretty cool on this. Um, we're going to give that a go. Oh. And the stand is quite chunky as well. I mean, look, look at the base, it's, it's quite big, it's impressive. That looks on what, 10 mil? Um, so, yeah. This thing ain't going anywhere, so there's obviously uh, a lot of weight. And there's minimal detail on here, um, but it's enough. It'll get the job done. And finally, the skeleton. Which isn't too heavy, it's quite light. Um, because um, you know the metal in it is the pins and the hardware i.e. the screws um, but some places uh, it does need a little bit of loosening up uh, just unturning the screw if, you know if you can uh, but the pins there's nothing really you can do about that you just got to be careful when bending this guy uh, because some of it um, is going to need uh, other parts on it for the, the, the actual bending process to actually work to spread the stress of the uh, the joints and whatnot but in terms of the proportions it's all leg <laughs> i mean the hands don't even come down to halfway through the thighs so it's it's the proportions are t you know typical of mecca i suppose uh which i'm not i'm not you know I'm too fussed about but you know if you are worried about proportions uh, it is kind of funky but nevertheless it's it's a good um good butterfly it's got loads of articulation where you want it uh, it's got a crunch and movable mechanics uh it has got a teapot uh, ab, ab twist thigh swivel um it has got double jointed knees um and it does have like a, a a mechanic for the pile drivers in the knees the ankles do twist and rock backwards and forwards it has got a toe bend and the feet can go down uh, but this is going to be standing on an action base so i mean i suppose you could do it in um, like a running pose or an aerial pose if you want to but it's probably best on terra firma standing on that base ready to rock but there's enough uh, motion in this uh, skeleton um, also it's got a, a hip uh, tilt up and down for higher kicks uh, but there's no locking mechanism there unfortunately uh, but like i say there's enough motion in this in this skeleton to get the poses that you want however um all that is sort of uh, negated by all the armor that goes on top so when you think that you know oh that's got quite a lot of motion in that and you whack with the armor and all the motions then disappear because of the the tolerance of the pieces as you as you'd know and expect uh but there we are thanks guys really appreciate it um i'll be building this on stream uh at some point um i don't know when because i'm still building the snow white preload uh, if you want to see the progress on that i'm going to be continuing that mondays tuesdays and Wednesdays on my Twitch link is down below I'd love to have you over and in the meantime have a fantastic day the sun is shining I'm going to put in some stock footage of the garden in spring and I'll see you next time thanks guys well, sorry about that I was just about to pack this away and I forgot it's got a manual 
and some water slides. Um, only one small sheet of water slides, uh, but they look detailed enough. Uh, they do come with a protective uh, paper as well as a wallet, so they're in good nick. Um, I don't know whether you can get any sort of uh, different parties on these, I'm not sure, um, for different quality, uh, but I'm sure these will be fine. And the manual. Uh, it's quite a big magazine, lots of, uh, lots of pages. Um, and I suppose there's the code there if you wish to use it. Um, I don't know the company that makes it. I'm assuming that's the brand. Um, and I don't know if this is their first model because it says 001. I'm not sure. Um, but I like the fact that it's got paper. Um, and it's a very, very nice, it looks like cartridge paper. It's very, very nice. I like it. It's part, almost like a parchment. And it's got a fit and effect to it. I like that. It's very nice. Uh, and also when you're streaming, stream building, uh, paper doesn't sort of have glare on it. So um, you can have this flat and you can look at the instructions nice and easily without any sort of light lens glare or, or light glare, uh, which you'd find on glossy uh, manuals, which is what pain when you're doing any sort of like live building or stream building. And you've got lots of lights and stuff. So having a nice paper um, manual uh, is a bonus and it is new. I've not I've not seen a paper manual uh, for a long, long time And uh, it looks very very simple uh, the instructions are really easy to follow It's like this is the part. That's where it goes <laughs> And also it does have numbered steps in certain areas, so that's good Because uh, I'm building the Snow White Prelude at the moment and a lot of the steps are up for interpretation. When, when you're looking at the instructions, you're like, what now? <laughs> and then when you, you, you put the pieces together, you think, oh, right, so you've got to have a sort of, uh, you've got to sort of preempt how, how things go with a little bit of a little bit of brain, brain power. Uh, but this looks like it's easy to follow. Uh, it's nice, the art, artwork, uh, the rendering looks really nice and crisp. Um, so yeah, putting this thing together doesn't look like it's going to be too much of a headache. Um, it's just a volume of parts uh, and mass. But you know, once once you start putting this all together, uh, by the time you've done the actual skeleton and the weapons, you, you know, it does look like it's going to build up real nice. I do like the arms, they do remind me a little bit of the tall geese, um, or, or um, the Epion in terms of the lower arms. Um, I like rounded uh, forearms that sort of taper down, almost like, um, almost like a, a Starbucks latte cup that's just sort of had a cutout and some parts added to it. I, I kind of like that design, bizarrely enough. But there we are, um, and at the back there, it will show where to put the um, the markings and so on. And this is like an options of how you can have it standing on the base with the ghost heads. So there we go, guys. That's what's in the box. Thank you for joining me uh, again. Really appreciate it. Sorry for that added extra bit on the end there. Um, I hate the sound of my own voice, so I'm probably winding you up. So I'm going to get going, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Cause I have 30,000.